Hi and welcome back to part 2 of the Neon Flex tutorial. Today we're going to create some letters on clear acrylic to say open. Before we start, let me just talk about the Neon Flex and its history going back some 15 years ago. Originally Neon Flex was this size. It's quite large and it was produced in PVC. The silicon based material wasn't that popular back then and it also used an older type of LED and the cut point was larger, about 75mm. The company who held the patent in China for Neon Flex was successfully challenged by a guy called Raymond Chen 15 years ago. Since then, Neon Flex has changed and improved rapidly. I don't think Mr. Chen could have imagined that Neon Flex would have come this far and change at such a rapid pace. Until recently, Neon Flex was still produced in PVC and it was very rigid and had a minimum of a 25mm cut point. Now it's silicon based with options for 8mm. 5mm thickness and the smallest cut point 10mm. The latest version to enter the market is what we call the Freeform Neon Flex. Inside the Neon there are two wires which allow it to bend to whatever shape you want and it'll stay in shape after bending it. This one here is double sided and we also do single sided and in 8mm and 5mm. You can use glass neon supports to mount it on a board or wherever you want it to be. There are different types of connecting wires you can use, some non-solder wires, some with pins on them which you can just insert or push inside to make contact. Personally I still prefer to solder the cable on. It's more secure and the last thing you want when you spend so much time making a neon sign is for it to become disconnected easily in transit or if someone knocks it. It's not worth the trouble trying to save that little bit of time. Okay that said, let's start doing the letters. The Neon Flex we'll be using is 5mm with a 10mm cut point. Here you can see black marks indicating where the cut points are. Let me show you this compared to one with a 25mm cut point. So you can see the advantage of using a smaller cut point is that it lets you do a much more accurate design. So I have a piece of material here which is 5mm thick with a CNC cut channel. Now after you remove all the protective paper or film, I always use some anti-static cleaner to give it a wipe to get rid of the static, otherwise when you put the adhesive on it, it'll go all over the place. Okay, first of all you need a sharp knife, pen, sharp pointed scissors, a scalpel and some adhesive. This is Mitre Bond, comes in two parts. The activator looks like a felt tip pen which I apply to the back of the neon. And this is the glue itself when you put it in the channel. As soon as you bring the two together it'll bond immediately. But for it to fully set it takes around 10 seconds. It'll hold as soon as it touches. So, next you need to decide where you'd like the power cable. Now here I'd imagine that we'll start at the top here, so the neon flex will come round like this, and go all the way round here, and stop here. And the next one will start from here and go round, bend down and back up, and finish here. We'll need a connecting cable from here to connect these two lengths and you'll need the cable from here to the beginning of the E. So the E will start from here, go round, up and down and back up, and that will be the end. So now we'll start measuring it out. You need to mark out the neon where you'd like to cut it. Always try to cut it a little bit longer than you need. You can always trim it down later. I need to angle that slightly. that one's done and I'll just speed this up so you can see where I cut the next piece. Here I'm going to cut and angle the neon to the cut point where I know the solder point is. You'll need a sharp knife to do this and you can use a mitre cutter if you want but I prefer using a knife. 
Here you can see the solder points where you'll connect your wires. This is the second piece, so I'm just going to mark it with a number two, and the other piece is number one. I've got all the pieces now, and on this last piece I don't need to cut or angle the ends. I'll switch on the soldering iron ready to solder the cables. Before I do that, I need to drill a couple of holes for the cables to go through. Because this piece here is angled that way, it's difficult for me to see the solder points, so I'm going to cut it to expose the LED strip. Once I bend it back, you can see the solder points, just after the LED. I'm using a short 100mm cable which we sell online. It's a 28AWG, so it's very fine, which means you can bend and twist it. If the cable's too thick, then you might have problems with it coming loose or detaching from the solder pads when you move the neon. Sorry, I'm soldering this upside down so you can't see what I'm doing, but you have an idea anyway, I think. Soldering isn't as difficult as it might seem. Just remember to keep your cabling consistent, and if the gold wire is on the solder pad nearest the top surface of the neon, then do that with each connection. Here's the soldering up close. I'm just going to tuck the LED strip back into the tube. We can stick that back together later. Before I carry on, I want to test this piece to make sure it illuminates. I'm just using these crocodile clips to connect to a 12 volt driver to test it. That looks okay. Now I'm going to stick this back using the mitre bond. Now that's done, I'm going to start from here and go round like that. It doesn't matter where I finish because I allowed a little bit of extra length and I can trim that off. I'm just going to run the activator along the neon here. I dot the glue in the channel about 20-25mm apart. Do try to follow the groove and be careful not to get it on the surface of the panel. Once that's in place, I like to stick this end piece to the neon to give it a neater finish, like so. Next I'll do the second piece following the same process. Sometimes pieces of plastic will be in the way of the solder pads, so I'll just trim these away. You probably shouldn't use the panel as a cutting board like I do. Better to use a tile or a board so you don't scratch your panel. Here you can see I've just cut away that bit of plastic. I'm going to feed the cables through the front then solder the connecting wire. Just going to check this second connection before moving on. Pull the cable back under and stick the neon into the channel. Repeat this process till you've done each piece. There isn't much difference between doing small or large letters. If you're a tradesperson, when it comes to doing your pricing, you'll need to bear in mind that people may think the smaller letters, the cheaper it is. But in reality, the smaller letters, the more fiddly it is, so it takes more time.
These are the end caps which I'll place on each exposed end to give it a nice finish. The channel in your panel is quite shallow, like this one, which is about 3.5 millimeters. Neon at the tight bends tends to splay outwards, so I like to glue it together. You can make the channel deeper if you want, but you need to use thicker acrylic, and you'll need to account for this when you're costing up your signs. Be careful that the tip of this glue doesn't touch where you put the activator, because it'll block the glue. See how quickly that bonds. I'm going to do the same on the P. So now we put the power cable on. This is the one we stock, which already has a DC connector on it. We sell it with a 1 meter or 2 meter cable. I need to drill a hole first, bring the cable to the front. And yeah, you guess it, solder it on. Finally, add the last end cap. Now we can test. I'll remove the plastic last so I can tidy the cables and hide them as much as possible. I didn't clean the panel first, so here I got a little bit of glue on the acrylic. So make sure you use the anti-static cleaner first. It's important to glue the power cable down because there's more chance of that being pulled than any other cable. We don't want those connections to come loose. Just make sure not to let the activator touch the glue nozzle because the hole is so tiny and you need it that way to have control of the flow and limit overspill. Okay, let's switch it on. So it's all done and I hope you like this tutorial. If you did, give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. We've got lots more tutorials on LED sign making to come. If there's anything you'd like to see, do let us know in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.